This is Just The Job. Kia ora and welcome to Just The Job, the show where we go behind the scenes to some fantastic careers. And today, we've got three more exciting jobs for you to take a look at. And then at the end of the show, we're going to catch up with Sarah from Career Services, who's got some great tips on how to kickstart your career. In today's show, Logan has a close encounter with some seriously large machines. Alexandra is keen to experience an outdoor career, so we send her out on an adventure. And Mikey checks out if he has the right stuff to take on a varied career with a community heart. But first up, here's Logan, who's had plenty of experience with regular farm equipment, but he's about to come across some super-sized machinery in need of attention. Hey, I'm Logan, and I've grown up on a farm my whole life, and I've always been interested in smaller machinery, and now I thought I'd give bigger machinery and try and see how that goes. Engines don't get much bigger than the ones found in combine harvesters. They separate the head of the wheat from the stalks on farms around the country. And some of the biggest harvesters and tractors are found at Class Harvest Centre, where workshop supervisor Steve Copping will be showing you around. G'day, Logan. My name's Steve Copping. I'm from Class Harvest Centre. Here's the overall you're going to be wearing today. We'll take a look around the workshop. All right. A good agricultural technician basically has to um, be able to use his hands, use his head, be wary of a customer's problem, and just think that if that was their problem, they'd want it fixed as soon as possible. This is the machine we're going to be working on today, Logan. Yep. What we're going to be working on today is the drum and concave clearance, which is the gap between the tips and the bars. It's one of the most important things on a combine. 90% of the threshing of a combine is done in the drum and concave area. Before we do the adjustment, though, we need to lift the concave up, down and up again. So just make sure it's in the right place before we do the adjustment. The harvester needs to be cycled to make sure that there is no air in the system so that the measurement is accurate. Logan uses a concave clearance tool to check the gap between the concave bar and the APS drum. There's a lot of adjustments to do on a combine, and if they're not right, the combine won't work right. The loss to a farmer can be output, work hours, uh, just because it's not set right. With the drum set accurately, they're off to the next job. Hello, right, Logan. A lot of our service work is done out on farm, so we'll go and fit this belt at the combine, and we'll load up and we'll go. OK? Yeah, right. Farmers don't want to be driving these $400,000 machines on the open road, so it's often best for the technicians to go to the farm. All right, Logan, this is a combine, the same model as the one we've worked on in the workshop. The only difference is it's got the front on it and the trunk back on. We're going to be changing the drum belt on this one today. The pulley is set to the slow position and the belt is removed. All right, put your two hooks under the safety bar there. 99% of the work during the season are done on farm. This year we're doing approximately 70 winter services on combines out on farms. One of the benefits of going out on the farm is that they get a good work and rapport with the customers and they'll all often ask for the same agricultural technicians back. The replacement belt is worth $1,500 and needs to be set well so that it doesn't slip. One of the biggest um, things about doing winter maintenance and repair work is when you're doing the job to check everything once you've done it to make sure it is going right once you've finished the job. As with any job, you do it once, you do it right. It's an impressive machine with an important job to do, but servicing combine harvesters is not the only work at class. The wide range of agricultural equipment they sell comes into the country in parts and it's up to the technicians to assemble them before carrying out a pre-delivery inspection. All right, Logan, next job today is to put a set of blades on this new mower. This is a little bit different to what you're used to seeing at home. Being an agricultural technician isn't all about uh, strong muscles and lifting big wheels and that. There is a lot of delicate work, as in with circuit boards, dios, checking circuit boards and that. So it's not all about having muscle. You have got to have a um, little bit of um, subtlety about you as well. Preparing the equipment for delivery is one of the first things an apprentice learns on their apprenticeship. The apprentices of the day get support from the Moto Industry Training Advisors. They come on a regular basis to check the paperwork, make sure the paperwork is all up to date. The equipment inside agricultural vehicles is state of the art, but so is the equipment used to test them. Hello right, Logan, this is the next job. Need to check the horsepower of this tractor. We're going to use the dynamometer. This tractor here should be around about 240 horsepower. We hope it is. The dyno reduces the horsepower of the tractor close to stalling, simulating the effect of the engine pulling a large load. The technology of farm today has come on leaps and bounds in the last 20 odd years. Um, gone are the days where there was just a clutch pedal and a gear lever. Nowadays, you've got to have computer skills to be able to program diagnostics and configure machines with a computer. All right, Logan, we've done the test. 
We've proved that the horsepower is up to what it should be, to the rated horsepower. So we'll switch it off. All right, Logan, next job we've got to do is take the wheel off this combine. During the season, the customer um, stuck a metal spike through the side, so we've got to take it off so it can be repaired before next season. So we'll put the blocks under the axle, we'll jack it up, put the dolly under, pull the wheel off, and then we'll get the tyre company around to come and change the tyre. Anybody considering an apprenticeship in the agricultural industry today can look forward to training in New Zealand, training overseas, Australia, Europe. We also offer the opportunity to travel to Europe to work. Um, so there, there is a lot of opportunities within the um, agricultural sector. Logan's changed the wheel on his quad bike before, but this has been a whole other experience. Yeah, Logan done very well. He, he took interest in what he was doing. He asked questions and he was, yeah, very impressive. It was quite a physical job, but also there was a lot of small technical sides to it as well. I'd, I'd like to do it in the future. The New Zealand Motor Industry Training Organisation offers a national certificate in automotive heavy engineering with strands in agricultural equipment, plant and equipment and road transport. Heavy equipment automotive engineers need to be practical, responsible, alert, patient and able to think logically. They also need to have an eye for detail as they will be dealing with equipment worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. There are national and international work opportunities available and there are opportunities to work in workshop or out in the field. Plus, you can earn while you learn. Well done, Logan. That mix of technology and large machinery could be just what you're looking for. After the break, we're going to catch up with Alexandra and see if she's found just the job in the great outdoors. This is Just The Job. Welcome back to Just The Job, where we look at some incredible careers to give you an insight into some of the opportunities out there waiting for you. And next up, Alexandra is about to find out what a guide needs to learn to take others through some of the amazing environments that we have right here in New Zealand. I'm Alex Martin and I'm 16 and I go to King's College. And today I'm going to be checking out being an outdoor recreation leader. Outdoor recreation leaders get paid to be experts at activities from kayaking to caving from walking to mountaineering. Their job can range from guiding people through an experience to teaching them the how-to skills of outdoor adventuring. First stop is meeting Scott Colpin, a tour guide working for Waitomo Adventures. Once merely a stopover for tourists on the way to Australia, New Zealand is now a destination in its own right. And over the last 15 years, the outdoor recreation industry has skyrocketed. Yeah, yeah. In a few moments, Alex will be dangling over a 100 metre drop. No chance to back out. No, we won't let that happen. <laughs> and it's Scott's job to ascertain the skills and general competence of whoever he is leading. Make sure you're secure. That way in the cave, if you trip over a rock, hopefully, you only fall that far. Okay. Cool. Yep. Worst case scenario, you might take a tumble to the next knot. Oh no. But that'll stop you from falling 100 metres. Okay. Yeah. Cool? Yep. Whoa. I bet a lot of people start freaking out about now. Oh, big time. Yeah, safety must be a big aspect of the job. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. I'm having a look at my knot which is uh, what we call a bird's nest. Okay. The idea behind this knot is it's releasable. So in any situation where someone becomes stuck for whatever reason, yep. we can release that knot and lower them down. Most of the leaders take two tours a day. And reading the fear in a foreign backpacker's face is just part of the job. How are you feeling? Not too bad. <laughs> All right. Have you looked down? Uh, no, I'm not going to. <laughs> I think I'm ready. And just start dropping down. <laughs> oh. Easy, eh? Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> Easier than I thought. A good outdoors leader has to be much more than just an adventurer. He often has to be an agony aunt. Yeah, we see people uh, burst into tears, shaking, all sorts. You end up having some, like, full-on counselling sessions yeah. <laughs> up there, all sorts of stuff comes out. Exactly. Yeah. Get to know someone really well. <laughs> At Waitomo, uh, there are approximately 50 major cave systems. And Scott's about to take Alex and some tourists underground. Yeah. Have you had any claustrophobic people go down there? Yep. All what the time. Done? This is normally when you find out too. Yeah. They just whip their helmet off, unzip their jacket, they start hyperventilating. That's when you know they're for real. Yeah. And just like the abseil, 
you get them down there and get them going, yeah. and they're normally fine. So it's just about calming them down? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So what would be the best part about your job, do you think? Wow. I mean, just have a look around. Like this morning with the big app sale, that was one office. Yeah. This is another office to work in right here. Um, normally when people do something like this, they've never done it before, and, and you get to help them through. It's really cool. Yeah, it is. Just have a look down here. Cool. Okay, so we're going to head through this hole next. Okay. Um, it's what we call a duck, so it might mean you have to just hold your breath a little bit, mm -hmm. duck under, and up the other side. After a quiet ride in the pitch black, punctuated only by glowworms, the tour group emerge above ground. A little wetter and hopefully a little wiser about a world which never sees the light of day. The next morning finds Alex above ground where she can scale new heights in the adventure industry. And Karen McKay, manager of the Sir Edmund Hillary Outdoor Pursuit okay. Centre, can help her find her feet. Ben, that was <laughs> definitely the wrong pack. You put that oh, back. <laughs> put that one back. Joking aside, falling over on the slopes is no laughing matter. And just as with all the school groups Kieran leads, before any serious climbing, Alex will have to learn how to stay upright. It's a bit harder than it looks. Yeah, well, one thing that you can do, right, you're actually stretching out here with your ice axe. Okay. Bring your ice axe in closer. Why is that, for balance? Or? Well, if you're out here, like my feet want to slide out from my foothold, yeah. right? If I bring this in closer, I stand upright better, and my feet are pushing straight down onto the snow. Okay. Go! <laughs> Nice, yep, keep going to the bottom, do it again. Another one, stop. <laughs> nice, lovely. I love getting out into the outdoors and into this incredible spaces that we've got around us here. It's, personally, that's fantastic, getting up high up a mountain or into the beautiful bush or up or down, up and down rivers, you know, that's fantastic. To share it with a group of students is, I reckon, even better. You know, to have a group of students where you teach them some skills and they can stand back and they end up going to these beautiful, amazing wild countryside and they're doing it all themselves. And you're yeah. sitting back just making sure they're safe, basically. Great. That was good technique. Come on, guys. Outdoor guides need to know all about surviving in the outdoors, from clothing to shelters. Yeah. They need to be able to read maps and the yeah. weather, use special tools and oh, think on hours. their feet. But for most outdoor yeah. leaders, there's one skill set which is oh, the most hours. satisfying. So what do you love about your job? Being able to teach people skills, but not just these outdoor skills. Just being able to teach them something about themselves and how to get on with each other. Yeah. And hopefully they'll take those sort of, that, that sort of stuff back to, the, back to the community, back to their school, and create a bit of good atmosphere back there. Teach others, maybe. Yeah. 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 And that to me is a real buzz. See, the next thing we're going to play on? Yeah. That big rock down there. It's huge. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm looking forward to that. It's good fun, I think. I just won't look down. No, you, <laughs> if you took your hand off that rope for a second, you will stop. <laughs> I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'm that funny that you got Ben to catch it. It's fine. <laughs> Don't you feel good? <laughs> Thought so. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> Swedish language is very strange. It's very strange. It was so much fun. It was awesome. No, no. <laughs> So has being both under the earth and far above it given Alex some perspective on a career as an outdoor recreation leader? I could definitely see myself doing this sort of job. It's just so different to any other job that you sort of hear about and it seems like a lot of fun. Having qualifications can help enormously in getting a job as an outdoor recreation leader. You can earn while you learn by taking courses such as the National Award in Cave Guiding Level 3, the National Certificate in Outdoor Recreation Instruction Level 5, or the New Zealand Outdoor Instructor Association Level 1. Outdoor recreation guides may specialise in a particular activity, such as guided walks, whitewater rafting, kayaking, caving, skiing, diving, fishing, climbing or mountaineering. You must enjoy being in the great outdoors and also be reasonably fit and strong. The ability to problem solve and think on your feet is important. You will be working within the tourism industry and dealing with the public, so being able to work with a team and relate to a huge range of different people is crucial. Well done Alexandra, I'm so jealous, what a brilliant job. And if you want to find out more about that career or any of the careers that we've featured throughout the series, then jump on our website, which I'll have the details for coming up real soon. After the break, we join Mikey, who, while multi-talented as a ukulele player and breakdancer, is actually checking out a career in health promotion.
This is Just The Job. You're watching Just The Job, and if you're trying to figure out what career path to follow, then this is the place to be. And Mikey's up next, and he's on the job with Ben in a career that certainly gets you out and about and mixing with a whole lot of different people. Hey, I'm Mikey Maloney, I'm 17, and I'm Year 13 at Rangatai College, and today I'm going to check out what it means to be a public health promoter. Kia ora, kia ora ana, talo falawa, mālo lele, ni sambolo vanaka, and warm Pacific greetings, and welcome to Hiha On Air on Wellington's Access Radio 783 AM. And for those listeners who haven't joined us before, Hiha stands for Healthy Eating and Healthy Action, and basically what we're trying to do is trying to get uh, Māori and Pacific communities eating better and getting more active. And uh, we've got a special guest with us today. We've got uh, Mikey Malone from Rongatai High School. Despite the fact that Mikey is not Māori or Pacific, he can actually actually played the ukulele, which is quite impressive. And um, as we all know, Pacific people love their ukuleles. And uh, if he's good enough, we might even use it in one of our radio ads. And if he's not, then uh, we'll just uh, cut it. <laughs> so take it away, Mikey. Cheers. Health promotion is about helping people make healthy lifestyle choices. For Ben, <laughs> using radio is the perfect way to reach the most people with health messages. <laughs> And giving them a few laughs will keep them listening. Nice, there we nice. go. Give them a <laughs> different health promoters will do Fire different things. Focus. Some will have a specific focus yeah. on, say, issues like reducing smoking or breastfeeding. So everything. And basically, it's all about trying to make sure that um, people are leading a healthy lifestyle. Sounds great. Yeah. So does that sound like a bit of you? Oh yeah, definitely. At Taking health promotion programs to various communities is part of the job description. Hold that, there, that's fine, cool, yep, and um, I'll see you in there. Today, Ben and Mikey are at Rongatai College looking at whether the healthy eating and action messages are getting through. And sometimes doing something a little crazy is the best way to break the ice. Fish up a fish. And um, it is actually pretty difficult. Come on, Mikey. Come yes. On. Go, go. Yes. Yes. Come on. Tony's first out of the block. Come on. Okay, what do you yes. got? Yes. What do you got, Tony? What's Tony got? I Tony's got a chocolate cake. cake. Now, is that good or is that bad? It's a sometimes food. It's a sometimes food. That's correct. They don't call me king of games for nothing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What do you got there? What do you got there? I've got a row of apples. A row of apples. That's fruit. Oh, that looks delicious. That looks, that looks awesome. So is that good for you? That's very good. That's very good for you. A major skill for a health promoter is listening to the needs of their target community okay, so and also working health, with them in a way that helps that community to meet its own needs. Draft, just health promoters draft. network with communities and evaluate programs, but they also plan programs from their office and then help to set them up. Ben's focus is to encourage Māori and Pacific Islanders to be physically active. And he's set up a weekly breakdancing class at Wellington College. You think you're up to it? Oh, I've got what it takes, trust me. Yeah? OK, now just one thing, we're probably going to have to change your clothes up a little bit. Um, you know, you're not looking too bad, but, you know, we're going to make you looking funky fresh. Funky fresh, funky let's fresh. do it. Let's do it. Boom. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. So all you do is... So kick out and step back, and then step down. And then switch feet, kick out, step back, <laughs> step down. Ben's a man, he's actually really cool, and I just love dancing under him, so you know, just learning new things as well, that sort of thing. But it's cool. a lot of movement, it's good. <laughs> it's all about engaging with the youth, um, teaching them positive aspects of hip-hop, because sometimes hip-hop gets a bit of a bad rap in the press and the media. And you know, it gets the whole body pumping, you know, arms, legs, everything, the whole set, especially the mind as well, you know, it gets the creativity moving, I think. So what we want to do is teach them how to dance, teach them how to move, and enjoy themselves and be with friends, and yeah, teach them, teach them the good aspects of it. <laughs> Hand gesture is optional. Oh. Mikey, oh, oh, he's pretty good for a beginner, I'll say that much. I was pretty unco when I started, probably more unco than him if you can believe that. Ah, uh, Mikey, he's, he's got personality, but uh... Oh, go for it, go for it, go for it! What's that? I think he's still got a little bit more to go before he's ready to break dancing for the other people. Another Get Physically Active program Ben has set up is an evening exercise class for the Pacific Island community. Well, I'm getting on in life. Uh, I'm 71, you know? And uh, I'm not going to sit around and wait to die. It's different, make my body light and also walk fast and far when I want to walk. You, you have to be moving, you know, it's 
to be astonished at exercise. Uh, I think uh, the guys blessing I think you're a little bit weak. Public health aims for prevention over treatment, okay. and free checkups are just part of the service. So, how do you work with Ben? Oh, Ben's wonderful. He organises the classes, and then we come along and do the health checks every month. So he gets the word out there to get the people here, and it's, yeah, it's a really good cooperation. Sweet, yeah. good teamwork. It is. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet, and what's the best thing about your job? Definitely the variation. All the different things, getting out in the community and, you know, helping people. Um, you know, that's, that's the one main thing that I wanted to do. Mikey was really positive, um, and he got stuck in, and he, and he was really interested about the role, and I think that Mikey would make an awesome health promoter. I could see myself as a public health promoter, but I think my ukulele slash breakdancing career is going to take off, so not too sure. <laughs> <laughs> Health promotion is about supporting people to increase control over the things that influence their health and well-being, often by inspiring them to make healthy choices. It helps to be self-motivated as you may be working independently with your target community to make things happen. It's also important to be able to listen to what people in the communities are saying and be able to communicate with them and with other organisations providing services to them. Any passions, interests or skills which you already have can often be integrated into how you promote health initiatives. At the end of the day, it's all about public health, so it helps if you are interested in the health and well-being of others. Well, it's going to be a hard choice for Mikey. Those dance moves could really take him places, but if not, then he's certainly got the personality to go far in a career in health promotion. So thank you to Mikey and to all those who featured in today's program. To help you even more, Career Services has loads of information and resources available to you, and here's Sarah now with some great advice. At school, it's sometimes hard to see the link between the subjects you enjoy and possible career paths. Where To is an online tool that can show you where your subjects can lead to in the world of work. So when you click on English and Media Studies, for example, it'll bring up different job ideas and the training you'll need to get into that job. There are 15 Where To wheels to choose from, so click on to careers.govt.nz today to see where your favourite subjects could take you. If you'd like more information about any of the careers you've seen here today or that we've featured throughout the entire series, then just jump on our website at tvnz.co.nz slash just the job. Good luck, and I'll see you again next week. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.